Hi guys, how you going? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, a little something different for this video. Uh, instead of being out in the field, I thought I would uh, take you guys through uh, some of the apps, uh, about six of them I'd say. The six apps that I personally use a lot when it comes to um, planning uh, a night out where I want to shoot and want to make sure that it's worth the effort because uh, I don't know some people are lucky they they live in really dark skies I live in the capital city uh, so for me I have to travel uh, at least an hour and a half uh, one way uh, to get to anywhere that's gonna be reasonable to shoot uh, some astro landscapes so uh, I want to make sure that when I'm planning my shots um, I'm, I know when I'm gonna go head out that it, it's gonna be a successful night it doesn't always work out that way sometimes you know you know how weather it can be, be the weather is always uh, sometimes predicted wrong um, but there are sometimes some telltale tell, some telltale signs that uh, it's definitely gonna be a good night and um, actually as I even make this video last night was a was a pretty good night it cleared up as predicted so uh, you've probably already seen that video by now um, that should be the video that I posted before this one but um, anyway, I want to take you through six apps slash websites that I use to plan my nights out. All right, so the first app and probably the most popular app out there amongst uh, astro landscape photographers and even landscape photographers uh, to use when you're planning your nights out uh, is uh, an app called PhotoPills. Now, PhotoPills is available both on iOS and Android. Uh, but it's a very, very complex and very detailed app. Uh, it does cost money, but it certainly is worth it. Um, I honestly, I sit on the couch and I can click through different locations that I want to go to or have been to, and I can plan ahead where and when the Milky Way will be rising in what direction, um, and also make sure that there's no moon out and, and things like that all from the comfort of my own home, and I can see in, uh, I can predict, like predict where it's gonna be at what time, and I can then save those, uh, those actual uh, dates and times and stuff in, in, a, in a list of mine on PhotoPills. Uh, so it's a very, very, very powerful app to use. It's not easy to just download and pick it up and just use it. Um, there's, there is a fair few uh, on YouTube tutorials on how to use it and uh, also Photo Pills themselves have their own YouTube channel so I'll leave the link down below for that one um, and uh, a guy, Raphael, he's the, uh, I guess, the maker of Photo Pills or one of and he's the main face of Photo Pills and he takes you through a whole heap of uh, uses of the app to plan moon shots and sunrise shots and Milky Ways uh, meteor showers, just star trails, just everything. You can plan it all through the app um, and there's some really detailed uh, aspects of the app that really, really help you out. So that's the number one app I use. Um, I only know it for what and how I need it. Um, but as I said, there's YouTube tutorials out there to help you learn how to use it. Um, but it's very, very powerful. And I definitely, definitely recommend you downloading that app and having that on your phone to, uh, to use to plan your nights out. Okay, so the second app I would recommend, and I guess it's not any particular app, um, I'll mention which one I use, but it's just your, your local weather app. Now, there's a lot of weather apps out there, um, especially here for me in Australia, there's a lot of apps. Uh, I've found ones that I find uh, more informative or more accurate. Um, I definitely, there's apps that have uh, anywhere from, you know, your week to two weeks sort of, uh, I guess, forecast. Um, the ones that have the best and solid week uh, sort of uh, forecasts, I've narrowed mine down to an app called Willy Weather. Uh, that's the one I personally use for my you know, seven day outlook. It gives me uh, a you know, good sort of forecast and it's fairly accurate. It also gives me then the hourly uh, between the days and the nights and uh, gives me little cloud icons and, and things like that, whether or not it's gonna be, if they see, see it as there can be some cloud or not. Um, there is another weather app I do use, it's called the Weather Network, it's the only one I can find uh, currently that has a 14 day forecast. 
Um, it's fairly hit and miss, uh, to be honest, um, but it does give me that 14 day uh, forecast so I can see two weeks in advance and sort of get a, a little bit of a heads up what might be coming. Um, and I guess that's probably a bit more of a placebo effect, I think. It's more of a, if I see a clear night and two weeks ahead, that it makes me feel a little bit better knowing that there's something coming. But um, it's been fairly good. It hasn't been too too bad to the point where I won't use it. So, but that's why I'm, I'm mentioning the Weather Network app. So that's my one here in Australia anyway. And Willy Weather is my main uh, seven day one. Uh, but to back up with those weather apps, there's one more app that I would recommend and uh, that would be an app called Clear Outside. Now this, this app, Clear Outside, is an app on your phone, so it can be on iOS or Android as well. Uh, and that's downloaded, downloadable from anyone around in the world. But there is also a website uh, on the computer that you can go to, which will give you uh, the same uh, information and stuff like that, where you can type in your location and it will give you uh, a nice detailed forecast actually of temperature, uh, cloud covering, whether it's low cloud, mid cloud or high cloud, uh, rain, dew. Uh, it even mentions the International Space Station, if it's going to be visible um, that sort of morning or evening. Um, it's got a whole heap of stuff on there. Um, so it's an interesting app. It's, that, that, that one is also a bit hit and miss. It's not too bad though, but I like the detailed cloud, uh, I guess, forecast of the low, high and you know, sort of mid clouds that sort of gives you a rough idea of what might be in the sky at the night. So marrying that up with your weather, normal weather apps and then merging over into uh, clear outside and just trying to gauge the best sort of conditions that, and the conditions that might be happening for that night. Okay guys, so uh, this is another website that I use when I do my planning for my nights out. Uh, the website's called Skippy Sky, as you can see up here, skippysky.com.au. Uh, it's an Australian website, but uh, it can also be used in Europe as well as North America. Uh, but uh, for my local viewers, we're going to be looking at Australia. And when you look at the interface, it has three rows of information here. So the first one's the local area that you want to sort of focus in on um, it doesn't do like uh, remote Queensland or Northern Territory um, it yeah so it has it's fairly limited in certain areas so hopefully you live in one of those main sort of areas um, but we'll look at Southeast Queensland at the moment um, and I have tried to do this uh, screen cleaning a few times and since I've uh, been doing this recording it's now updated itself um, but as you see here on the main sort of picture uh, you've got your uh, the day so Sunday 4th of April so yes I am recording this on Easter uh, and it's showing at 10 o'clock in the morning and this is what the cloud cover looked like so red means yeah it's very 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 100% cloud which it is, it is it's raining today and raining for the next few days um, but back to this, so that's that's total cloud cover. So you can, you can do low to show you the low cloud. You can do middle cloud, which looks like there's a fair bit of, and then your high cloud, which there's a lot of. Not that you get to see it, um, but that's the main sort of buttons I use. You've got other stuff here that I'm not particularly interested in using for on this website. But then the bottom one, so as you can see in the corner here, it says plus six hours uh, and then as you click onto the nine it jumps up to one o'clock hit the 12 four o'clock in the afternoon 15 goes to seven o'clock at night and so on so on um, that's oh, actually that's just high so if we go over to back to total cloud you can as you click through you'll see the cloud predictions moving barely but as I said we got a lot of rain here for the next few days but there you go as you see as you get to tuesday morning it starts to break up out west and um you just gotta keep clicking through and the cloud starts to break up a little bit until we get to what are we at there wednesday morning and then as it goes further through to thursday we're looking pretty good thursday morning um and then that's showing Thursday afternoon, starting to clear up a lot there. And then, yeah, into, what's that, Friday morning. So, it looks like we're going to have some clear spots here and there, which would be nice. 
but yes, yeah, so that's pretty much how I predict my cloud and use that uh, with my other weather apps and, and stuff to sort of try and target little pockets of uh, clear sky when uh, when things are getting tough. But um, yeah, Skippy Sky, definitely check it out and I reckon save that one in your browser and use that for your for your plans uh, when, when there's a new moon. Now another app that is great for helping you plan your shots and that's an app called Stellarium. Now, the reason I'm bringing up Stellarium, I, I personally don't use Stellarium on my phone. I use it probably more at the desktop. Um, and that can come in helpful for, um, for me personally, is using the, uh, it's, it's, uh, I can't remember, remember the name of the setting, to be honest. Uh, but it tells you the degrees from uh, 0, 5, 10, 15, up, into the, up in the sky. So if you're trying to photograph an object in the sky, uh, that is setting or rising behind something it will tell you what time it will be in position and what degrees uh, so then you know whereabouts in the sky that that particular uh, I guess uh, object in the sky is going to be at what time so you can sort of get a rough idea of where you're going to line it up. Um, another awesome tool is that you can actually dial in and tell Stellarium your camera sensor and focal length and it will actually crop in and sh frame up your shot for you as well. So you can sort of tell uh, in advance what your focal length is going to look like in camera, uh, so which is another handy tool. Um, I, I really, really do love that. Um, I think it's going to come in, in more useful as I start to venture it more into more of a deep, deep space object sort of uh, photography and get some bigger lenses on my Star Tracker and that's going to come in really, really helpful app that I want to mention is called Dark Sky Finder. Now this one probably should be the first app that you go to when planning your night out because uh, no sense in going somewhere and finding out that when you take your exposure your sky is all greyed out and washed out because of the light pollution. So maybe jump on Dark Sky Finder. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, app but also there is a web uh, website as well. Uh, it's not Dark Sky Finder, I, it's something like darksky.org or something like that, but um, I'll run some B-roll now so you can see the website and I'll show you the address. Um, but I'll also have a link to it down below in the description. But um, you just go to the, uh, the most updated and recent map and you can then uh, scroll across to your locations and where you want to go and you can get a gauge on how dark the skies are going to be, uh, ranging from obviously white hot, red, yellow, green, out to the blues and, and purples, which goes out to the darker skies. Now, just keeping in mind with those maps that if you're in a green area, even though it's sort of light polluted, but if you're facing out towards like the purples and the blacks, then you're probably gonna get a fairly clear sky anyway. So I wanna keep that, I wanna mention that when looking at a dark sky uh, site with this map is that, yeah, you might be situated in what they, what they're indicating is a light polluted area. If you're facing away from the light pollution and out into a dark area, um, that it's possible that you can be shooting from that location and still be getting a good uh, quality image of the night sky as well. So I just wanted to bring that up as well. So I do sort of troll through different areas around uh, my local area just to see where the dark spots are, find interesting locations, and then that's when I'd probably jump into uh, photo pills to use their little planner and uh, start making my little, uh, I guess, plans of where I'm gonna shoot and what I'm gonna shoot when that way. So Dark Sky Finder, fantastic little website and also app, uh, it's great, great to use. All right, guys, thank you. I'll, I'll leave it there. We don't want to make this too long, but they're the six apps and I use personally here. Uh, it's you know, you, wherever you're, you're watching this in the world, you might have some variations. And if you do have some variations from your local area, please leave comments down below to share those with uh, anyone else that's watching this video. Because uh, as this, uh, I guess this video gets a little bit older, things may change. So if you want to update uh, what I've said on this video in the comments below, please, please leave a comment down below with uh, other apps that you use. But um, anyway, if you do like this content, uh, please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, also give the video a thumbs up because that really does help this video get a bit of traction and hopefully more people see it and hopefully that helps them. Um, but in, as I said, any questions or anything like that, please leave a comment down below. Um, but yeah, 
until next time guys, uh, I hope to see you alongside me. Hopefully next month uh, is better for astrophotography. We just had a pretty tough couple of months in summer here. So as things start to cool down, hopefully I can get out and start doing some more vlogs. But um, until then, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.